Okay, so this is worksheet number three. Um, this just basically goes over some digestive disorders, and I'm going to... Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, you got to fill all these out. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, it's just one stage. Okay, um, so the first one, the definition is inflammation of the esophagus, feeling like it's pain from the heart, and this is heartburn. Um, that is the disorder, and the location is in your esophagus. So, that's nice. Um, the next disorder is cystic fibrosis, and this is from your lungs and your pancreas. Um, this is caused by abnormal chloride channels. Uh, this causes water to be drawn into cells or the interstitial spaces. And whenever you hear the word interstitial, um, think of tissue, interstitial tissue, um, tissue spaces. Um, so because water is going into these cells or into these spaces, it causes, um, it doesn't allow you to secrete as much on the surface. So you're not secreting. Um, and when this happens, when you're not secreting so much, it causes um, those secretions to dry out. And this can cause thick and cloggy mucus. And this can um, clot airways, which is really bad. So people with cystic fibrosis, they typically have like a vest that like vibrates to break all the mucus up. Or they do like pity pats, which is where they hit on people's backs to break all that mucus up. Yeah. <laughs> So it's um it's not fun, but that's because there's an issue between the, you know, you're not secreting water for like you know your saliva and your mucus and all that. It's staying in your cells. It's so that's the thing with that. Uh, the next one is inflammation of the liver can be caused by a virus, can be bloodborne, and comes in forms of A, B, or C. And this is hepatitis. Um, the next one is another liver condition. And this is cirrhosis, liver inflammation, fibrosis. And fibrosis is like stiffening and scarring. Um, liver inflammation, fibrosis, liver damage, and can result after years of drinking excess alcohol. So when you think about if there's ever a question over alcohol abuse or substance or something, um, cirrhosis is damage from substances. Hepatitis is an infection. That's the main difference. But sometimes if you get a really bad infection, it can cause cirrhosis. So, but just in terms of anatomy, hepatitis is an infection. Um, cirrhosis is a scarring. Hepatitis, you can have the virus but still be functional with. With cirrhosis, you have um, permanent liver damage. So um, both of them are pretty uncomfortable. Um, gallbladder disease, this happens in the gallbladder of all places. And this is uh, caused by pain, uh, by gall gallstones, and this is when pain radi radiates in the upper abdominal quadrant. So by radiating, the pain is um, not, you don't feel it too much. Well, you may feel it, you know, in your gallbladder, but pain can also um, travel to like your shoulder, which is interesting. It's referred pain, but typically if you feel it in your upper right quadrant, this is like where your gallbladder is. So... Um, which is nice when you know where things are, because now you're like, oh, my gallbladder hurts. <laughs> now you can, like, look at WebMD and, like, self-diagnose and freak yourself out. <laughs> exactly. Um, the next one is inflammation of the abdomen, uh, peritonitis. Uh, peritone, peritone um, means, like, your peritonone, peritoneum. Your peritoneum is basically Latin for your abdomen, and itis means inflammation. So it's inflammation of your abdomen. Um, lactose intolerance, um, this happens in your intestines because typically, you know, normally your intestines are supposed to secrete um, lactose enzyme or lactase enzyme to break down lactose sugar, but um, People who are lactose intolerant do not have the ability to break down lactose, which is milk sugar. Um, this causes lactose to be too big to um, digest or to be absorbed. So it'll kind of just stay in the intestine, and this can cause, you know, the bloating, the gas, and diarrhea, which isn't fun for anybody. <laughs> and then the last one, I believe. No, not the last one. Okay. Um, 
diverticulitis and inflammatory bowel disease. These both happen in your large intestine. So, if we're, so diverticulitis is when there's weakening in the intestinal wall, and this leads to protrusion of mucosal membranes, um, forms outpouching that can become infected and inflamed. So usually with diverticulitis, um, some people, so this is like your large intestine, okay, this is your, yeah, okay, so most people can have normal outpouchings, which can be normal, and these are just called diverticuli, okay, so, and that's okay, but when these become infected or inflamed, so just say a piece of like popcorn gets in there, and it causes this discomfort, that's diverticulitis, because itis, I-T-I-S, itis means inflammation. So you can have normal little outpouchings, normal little di tip diverticuli, but once they get infected or um, irritated is diverticulitis. Um, but not everyone has these. Most people or healthy people don't. I don't know if most people do. Um, I don't know the statistics. <laughs> I'm just a tutor. <laughs> um, uh, the next one is inflammatory bowel disease. This happens in the large intestine, and there are two forms of this. There's ulcerative colitis, and then there's Crohn's disease. Ulcerative colitis affects the mucosa and the submucosa and causes bloody diarrhea and cramps. So, if you see a question about bloody diarrhea, usually it's ulcerative colitis. Yeah. Yeah, well, usually diarrhea isn't good either way. <laughs> but, but yeah, just, yeah, Crohn's disease just affects all layers of the small and large intestine. The key word with Crohn's disease is small and large intestine, actually. Um, ulcerative colitis just happens, like, so if you have your intestines, okay, so use your large intestine, and then you have your small intestine, ulcerative colitis happens in this area, okay, Crohn's disease, which is nice because, you know, if you have an issue here, you can just get that removed and re, re surgical it, and <laughs> you'll be good, right, um, but with ulcerative colitis, you can have, or I mean with Crohn's disease, excuse me, Crohn's disease, you'll have an issue here, you'll have an issue here, and here, and here, yeah, Crohn's disease is, yeah, it's pretty much all over the place. So, so that's the key word with Crohn's disease, is small and large intestine. Even though I categorize it as a large intestine disease, usually it's in the large, but it can be in the small. And then lastly, cancer of the large intestine and the rectum. Um, fecal occult blood tests and colonoscopy may be required for diagnosis. This is colorectal cancer. So a fecal occult blood test is basically when you have a stool sample and you, um, you put it on like a testing strip and you'll see it'll either come up positive or negative for like the presence of blood. Um, while a colonoscopy is basically when they take a, scan a camera, you know, the person put the person to sleep. Yeah, they just take the camera up there and just kind of like, okay, is there any, you know, cancer? So that's colorectal cancer. And you'll see these um, diseases basically like through the reading, but this is kind of like a breakdown, um, simplified what they are. So do you have any questions over that? Alrighty then. Okay.